I'm Seven Stone, fighthype.com here with my guy, Michael Fox. How you feeling, man? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. Of course, man. I mean, you know, obviously the elephant in the room is um, Tim Zhu was about to fight um, Sebastian Fundora this weekend. Um, you know, seeing some pictures of you, you know, obviously was down there um, sparring with him and whatever. Just kind of how, how did that whole thing go about it? They reach out to you? Did you reach out to them? How did that come about? Yeah, so now what had happened was, um, you know, he was, he was scheduled to fight Thurman. You know, Thurman's 5'9 and, and orthodox. Um, he got, you know, he got injured, you know, for whatever, which everyone came to find out. But I, he was actually sparring Brian Mendoza, who's always on, who's also on the card. Um, and he's about to fight for the WBC interim. Um, he he hits me up. It's like I, like I said, uh, I'm, I'm on East Coast time. It's 11 o'clock at night. Um, I'm on my way to bed. Closer to 12, actually. I'm on my way to bed. I happen to wake up. I mean, his, he happened to call. I'm like, what's up? He's like, man, Thurman's out. I said, for real? He said, yeah. And they're thinking of moving from door up. And um, they, you know, they're going to need sparring. And I, I mentioned he's uh, And he's just like, before I give out your information, I want to see if he was down. I was like, yeah, for sure. Then uh, somebody from Tim Zoo's team called. We scheduled a flight. Like, we called like 20 minutes later. We scheduled a flight. Um, I had to pack and everything. I had to go to the gym, get my uh my 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 uh, spawn gear and everything, and then uh like what maybe three four hours later I'm on my way to the airport, and you know we we flew to uh, we flew to Vegas um and we got in three we got in three sessions you know, it was his last week of spawn so we only able to get in three sessions but I mean if you can fight you can fight I mean those those are some uh. Pandora has some attributes that you do want to train specifically for, but you know if you can fight, you'll you'll, you'll be able to make the adjustments. How was it exactly being in the ring with a Tim Zhu? I mean, you know, I think pretty much just about everybody would probably consider him maybe the best guy at one fifty four right now. So, how would you say it was being in the ring with him? Uh, it was good. It was uh, a good. It was a great experience just because you know, um, you know, when you're in the ring with somebody, you 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 see them a lot differently than what they're perceived as on the outside. And, you know, I learned a lot about Tim Zhu, you know, and just in the sense that, you know, he's – everybody seen – like, he's been he's been regarded as, like, straight up and down. Like, he's basic, he's this, he's that. I mean, just because he does things so – I don't really like the word basic. Uh, he's fundamentally sound. And, you know, he, he works behind the fundamentals. He's has a great high guard, sneaky – nice sneaky little jab. And, you know – Things like that. He's he's better than he, he's deserving of it. He's he's uh, or he's earned his he's earned his right to be called a world champion because you know he does the work. He he's not he's not as straight up and down as as he was previously perceived as. Mm. How's the power in there, man? The power, yeah, that's that's the uh, question everybody gives. But the power, he's um he's like a you know a breakdown type puncher. He's not a uh, he's not a one punch one hit a quitter type of uh, fighter. Now he has knocked people out, or he, or not knocked them out, but he stopped people early in their for in, in in fights, um, just off of uh, you know, probably catching them cold, they weren't warm and things like that. Like when he fought Ocampo, he caught Ocampo, he caught Ocampo, er, he caught Ocampo early, um, but um, you know, he didn't stop, you know, Bechet. He he, when he got to Tony Harrison, it was like round nine, so he doesn't rush, and and. He doesn't rush, but he hits hard enough that, you know, it's like I know that and you know, that I know from experience that if somebody's sitting there too long, I can I'll be able to tell you like that. They won't they won't they won't be around in those middle rounds. Like he'll he start he get he'll get his stoppages like in the middle rounds, in the late rounds, because like I say, he takes his time, he picks his shots and and they're and they're all heavy. He throws like really heavy shots. He's not like, you know, uh, you know, a new wave can hit somebody, put him in it. It's over. Tank can hit somebody. Ended. It's over. Uh, Wilder, duh. <laughs> you know, you, you hit somebody. It's over. Um, he he does, he's a, he's not punching like that, but he is a but he like I said he's a great pressure fighter, and you know, the, you know, fighters will wither as the rounds go on. You know, when when people see you fight and they see Fundora fight. At least to me, people would kind of be like, well, why doesn't Fundora fight like that? Because he's like 11 feet tall, but he doesn't 
really fight on the outside, doesn't like try to keep his distance. He kind of wants to like stand there and bang. So when you were training with Zoo, did you kind of have to go like, did you have to kind of like switch up the way you normally fight from fighting on the outside to, all right, let me show him the way Fundora normally fights? Um, no, I didn't really, I didn't really go in there like, man, I'm going to mimic Fundora. You know, I mean, the thing is, when you're fighting somebody tall, when you're preparing for somebody tall, it's not, people. I don't think people really worry about what, uh, well, coaches, I say coaches won't worry about what their fighter will do once they close the distance. Mm. They call me out there to, to practice, you know, practice closing the distance. Fundora, he doesn't do his up, utmost to, to maintain his range. But you will you could you'll have to walk through fire on the way in if you if you didn't prepare properly you couldn't uh, you couldn't seek out a southpaw that's at least six two or six three you know what I mean you'll take a lot of damage coming in and that was a prop that was a prop that's been a problem in for again uh, for him I mean that's been a problem for uh, Fundora's previous opponents they take a they take a lot of damage coming in I go in there fight the way I fight. And I, you know, and I challenge you, and I challenge your abilities, and I challenge the uh, whatever game plan the coach, you and your coach have put together to to close that distance and 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 put yourself in a position to be effective. Um, I can, I mean, I can fight on the inside too. I mean, uh, so you know, I'll fight on the inside uh, just so I can get back to the outside. But mm -hmm. my, my, like I said, my job is to make sure you can close the distance at any point in the fight. If we're gonna do ten rounds at a time, or how many rounds at a time. You got to be able to get in. You got to be able to close distance to be to be in your effective range. You know what I mean. So um, that's my biggest that's my biggest uh, uh, addition to any any camp I've been to. Brian Mendoza, Tim Zhu, um, um, when Tank fought uh, Barrios, um, they they brought me in for that one. Mm. That's how you could, they and they all they they all find a way to close the distance. I'll sit on I'll sit inside a little bit because I know Fundora will, um, and I I know I can. Fight. I, I know I can fight and I know I can protect myself on the inside. But my main goal is to, you know, whoever's whoever's paying me to spar is to, is to, is to make sure they know how to close that distance. Real quick, man, who hits harder between Tank and Zoo? Like, if if you can recall, like, who what's who's the one guy that hit you who's just like, okay, I ain't <laughs> I ain't trying to take another one of those real quick. <laughs> um, in all in all reality, and people think I'm crazy. And then we wrong, like it's weight class for a reason. Like that for sure. It's weight class for a reason. Yep. Um, but like when I was what, 18, Tank was probably 19, Tank hit me with a shot that almost put my lights out. Like in all honesty, I tell the story all the time where we're sparring at Headbangers Gym, he throws an overhand left. I see it and everything. It's too late to it's it's uh it's too late to maneuver past it. So I I I even braced for this shot. And mm -hmm. still, like, boom, when he hit me. And I and and I, jo I, jo I jokingly said, but I kind of mean when I'm like, uh, I'm like, damn. I said, damn, somebody hit a light switch in here. And then <laughs> when I see nobody reacted, I realized, damn, that's my light switch. You know what I mean? <laughs> gotcha. But <laughs> and and that like that is the, the kind of power tank has where he can like end the night early. You know what I mean? Um, and 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 after that, you know, I just you know, I I, I mean, I that's when I quickly made. Like, Learned how to maintain range. I mean, I was already working on that with shop where we all we both shop, whatever. But I like, man, he's not ever hitting me like that again. <laughs> now, Tim, like I said, Tim Zhu, he hits and all of his shots are heavy. All his shots are heavy, and he um, and 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 if you stay there too long, they'll break you down. And if you give him an opportunity, he's gonna hurt you. He hit me with a shot like on the top of my head a little bit. That that but that buzz that buzz me sound like whoa let me let me, whoa, let me check myself, mm -hmm. but you know, a shot like that I took a similar shot like that from Tank, and Tank just like that that type of knockout power is is like gifted to some people they're not wild Wilders and New Ways and and uh Tank Davis is that like that it's it's just something that's that's ingrained it's, I don't know if it can necessarily be teach you can teach people how to punch hard but teach people how to, like, knock people out. Terrence Crawford, you teach people how to knock people out. Uh, uh, um, it's, it's a hard thing to do. Do you find that, just one more thing on Tank, do you find it, like, maybe comical or maybe weird when people think that, like, I don't know, he doesn't want to move up to, and, like, 
fight Devin Haney at 140 pounds or he doesn't want to fight up and move up and fight a guy like um, Sabriel Matias at 140 pounds or, you know, like, do you think of Jerry's work? He's just like, I think he would, and I think he'll have no problem going up there, man. Uh, yeah, like, with the with the skill set that uh, Tank has, I, I, that skill set, you know, would allow him to be – would allow him to be a danger – at 130, 135, or 140. He's probably done at 130, but, you know, I don't – excuse me. He's fought at – one. I mean, he's fought at 140 before. I mean, it was Mario Barrios. Mario Barrios is probably more into his prime now, but, but I mean, that that pot – like, he – Tank has shown that that, that power is going to carry, and, and your skills are – your skills are always – your skills are always come with you. Like, you know, it's not a thing of – of uh, it's not it's like nobody nobody goes up a weight class and leaves their skills at a previous weight class. You need to find out that they, uh, they 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 weren't all that as cracked up as, as they think they are, um, or they are or they are what they say they are. But um, I think, yeah, no, I I mean I I can see I I think Tay just, you know, he's at a position where he can he wants to do he always wants to do things on his terms. I mean, he's one of the faces of boxing, um, you know, so so. It's on his terms. It's on his terms, and he'll go when he's ready. That's just the bottom line. He'll go when he's ready. Every fight, it does. Hmm. When you look at a guy like when you look at a guy like Tim Zhu, because when you before you posted like the actual picture of yourself, um, sparring with him, I had seen because obviously I'm following you on Twitter, my guy, yeah. and yeah. You know, I saw um I saw a picture that you posted of you, um, well, it was a picture of like a Las Vegas airport, and in my head, I'm just like, okay. I think he's about to go spar Tim. <laughs> so it just Probably. like, yeah. yeah, it just kind of like clicked to me or whatever, like really quickly. So, and granted, you're probably one of the best guys to get for somebody that's really tall. But in your opinion, is it not impossible, but is it just like really, really, really difficult to make that switch from a guy who's about average height to a guy who's really tall Fights on the inside, fights completely opposite of the guy you're preparing for. Is it difficult to make that switch? And I think it was um twelve to fourteen days or so. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's more of a question for uh Zoo, really. But um, the thing is with with this with this fight, so you know, Fandora was getting ready for Bullet before that. Mm -hmm. The guy he fights conventional conventional stance. I, I haven't seen him fight him in a while, but he was a bit of a uh, he was a bit of a, a a boxer too, if I remember correctly. Last time I saw him fight was Brandon Adams. But um, meanwhile, you got Fedor getting ready for a guy that's his height and you know, in the same stance. I think that it's going to be more of a challenge for Zoo to you know to go. We're going nine inches up in height, and and um and we're switching the, and we're switching the stance. I think the one saving grace. Now I'll say this: we don't know what. What Fandor has been working on for the past year, mm. but if we're going off a of past performance, I would say the one saving grace is that you know Fandor is willing to give up his height. Mm. And I mean, he fight he he his offense and and um in close uh at, at the close range is um it, it's it's a good he has a, he has good offense. I mean, we got to see has he tightened up his defense because like I said, Zoo is throwing some bombs. He's throwing some bricks. You know what I mean? So. Um, I think the one saving grace is that, you know, Fondor will give up his height. Now, if it was a instance in where Fondor comes out, he's really, really asserting the jab and he's circling around Zoo, um, that's where you could worry. Like, man, if he had, maybe if he had more time, he could have adjusted to this. But uh, the things that are good on Zoo's part is he's a good, he is a good counter puncher. He is patient. Um, but I think it's going to get to a point, even no matter what, What's been worked on by both guys? It's going to get to a point where they're any, where they're they're close to each other. They're in in one another's chest, or Zeus or Zeus on Pandora's chest, and Pandora's looking looking over him. But how tall? Because how, how tall he is. But but um, but the yeah. I mean yeah. You just I mean, we just we just have to see. And like when the fight's done, Zoo will be able to say. I mean, Zoo has it in his mind. He, oh, um, and, uh, and he's just like, man, no problem. Whoever it is, no problem. You gotta think too. This is a thing that people don't understand. I was talking to Zoo. He was in um he was in uh he's been in Vegas for seven weeks. 
Now, a seven week camp is a long camp for any. It's a good camp for anybody. But you got to remember seven weeks away from home. You know, he came from Australia. He said yeah. he had to do his customs in like Mexico City and things like that. And he's been in Vegas for seven weeks, so he's probably got in his mind, I'm not leaving without a fight. You know what I mean? When it, when he heard when he heard the news, he probably was like, man, I'm not leaving without a fight. So he's got in his mind that that he's gonna be that he's gonna do he's gonna do what it takes. He's gonna do whatever. It's, my bad, the call came through. He's gonna do whatever it takes to uh to get a fight and get a win and go back home all the way to Australia with two belts now. Who would you kind of say? Well, okay, I was gonna say who do you think is the more hungrier fighter? Do you think it's Zoo because it's like you know I'm undefeated, I uh, want to prove what want to prove my worth, or do you think it's a guy like Fundora? who's coming off that loss. Like, and I, I use you as an example, because when you picked up your first loss, you reeled off three in a row. The first fight back from your loss was an undefeated guy who was like 7-0, and oh, and you beat him pretty easily. So that's what I'm saying. Like, do you think it's a guy like Fundor who's just like, yeah, I lost, but let me show y'all something now. Yeah, I think he's on – I think he – I mean, I think he's on that type of time. Like, I mean – he, I mean, he. You ask him. He says he'll tell you that you know Brian Mendoza caught him with a lucky shot. He's gonna. That's what. That's what he's gonna. That's what he's gonna tell you. He's gonna tell you I'm still here. I'm still hungry. I still beat uh, Erickson Lubin, and, and, and I'm still. I'm still that. I'm still that guy. Um, it's a. It's a. It's just. It's just a proven ground for uh for 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 both of them. I mean, Zoo is still. He's the champion, but he's still the you know the new guy, the new kid on the block, and everything in a way. Um, you got you can give him credit for beating a former world champion and, and uh Tony Harrison, but you know, it's a it's it's he's on it. Zoo's on a mission. Like I put it like this, Fundora's on a mission to show that he's not damaged goods, and Zoo is on a mission to show that he's he's on a mission to make a uh, a big splash in uh he's on his mission so that he can make a big splash in Vegas or in the in the States, in the US. He's he's on a mission to show I'm not just bringing guys to Australia and fighting them on my terms. I'm gonna come over here and I'm I'm nice everywhere I go. You know what I mean? And we just gotta see which which mission and which which fighter's motivation uh wins out uh come Saturday. Official prediction. Official prediction. I mean I, I mean I, I'm gonna there's gonna be a bias for me, but because I was in his camp, but in all honesty, based on I've never been in the ring uh with uh Fundor. I haven't had the pleasure, but from what I'm feeling, from the shots I felt from uh, Tim and the the, pre the pressure he uh, he was putting on and things like that, I like his chance. I like his chances. I'm I'm going with I'm going with uh Noma Zoo for the uh, win. I'm going with Zoo for the win. I'm I'm basing that off of like I said, past performances from Fandor. We it's it's a it can be a night of shock. All of us would <laughs> imagine imagine all of us saying imagine all of us saying. Damn! Look at that that jab Fandora got on him now. Where you get that from? That's like there, there's 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 a plenty of space, for, uh, an opportunity for that to happen. But um, but we're going on past performances. Now. I say I, I we're going on past performances. I say Zoo's gonna win. I think Zoo uh Zoo might punch harder. Or I can't I can't guarantee I can't guarantee. You want to you want to know who you ask Fandora? I mean ask Ryan Mendoza who who uh who who hits harder, and then you know you'll get all you'll get all the insides you want. He fought both of, but um. But yeah, I'm going with I'm I'm going with Zoo. I'm going with Zoo.